And now I want to finish with this nice picture again. It, it may be a long while bef before we may be able to do any interferences at, at this level. But this is another thing that, that I, I actually learned from David, but, but it's to do really with, with Page and Wouters. Frequently, when you talk about other universes, you get the question of how does it feel to be yourself in another universe, you know, as though this is a very profound mystical statement. I think, I think the, 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 these are usually questions from people who read Philip Pullman a lot, you know, and they get the impression that you can hop from one universe into another, remember the previous universe, go back and all that nonsense, you know, that, that's not, of course, what quantum mechanics is all about. But actually, at the level of the universe, uh, this page, page Wouters picture is beautiful because it answers the question in exactly this way. What does it feel like to exist at another time? So, you know, if someone says to you, how does it feel to be in the other branch of the universe? You could just say, give yourself 10 minutes and then see how it feels. And that's it. That's exactly how it feels. You know, there's nothing unusual about that. And I, I'm hoping, you know, some of these things may not sound conventional to you, but I, I really am just communicating quantum mechanics as it is. This is what it is all about. Whether we will be able to control things at a you know, higher and more intricate level is a wide open question. And I'm very open to quantum mechanics failing. Actually, I am praying on a daily basis that it fails because that would be a great news. It's been boringly, boringly consistent. 150 years but actually the failure will signal something even magical if you like it's certainly not return to classical determinism um, to bring things down to the very boring and mundane level this is how far we are planning to go in the next few years and this is my last slide actually so forget um, a, a cat, forget Bob, forget all of these things, artificial intelligence at the moment, that's all very distant, um, let's say 10 years plus. What we are trying to do within the next few years is, is the following experiment. We've done half of it actually by now, and you can read about that. These are published results. But what we would like to do is take two living systems, put them into optical micro cavities that are separated uh, let's take two viruses. I'd love to do this, as you can imagine, with the coronavirus a, as a revenge, you know, a dead than alive coronavirus. But anyhow, uh, better dead probably than alive. But anyhow, what I'm doing here is I have a Max Zender interferometer, and in each arm of this interferometer, I have a living system, ultimately. We will probably do this with a non-living system as a warm-up, as a calibration, already difficult enough. But what you want to do is send a single photon, which then if it gets absorbed in one cavity, it excites one of these viruses or bacteria, and it doesn't excite the other one. Whereas if it gets absorbed in the other cavity, it excites this system here, but not the other one. And you can see that in our language, I'm preparing an EG plus GE, maximally entangled state of two living systems. Is this possible? Almost certainly yes, in my view. It really is a question of money. If you give me enough research funding, no doubt uh, we can do these things at that level. Um, of course, it will be much easier to first do it with a simple organic molecule of smaller size, simply to eliminate all sorts of noises, to do it at cryogenic temperatures and so on. But basically, the idea is exactly Schrodinger's. It's, it's stolen directly from Schrodinger. Take a single system, make it in a superposition of states, couple it to something else, and that something else then inherits this quantum ambiguity. And I think uh, we are very close to being able to make entangled states of two living systems. And if this works out the way that quantum mechanics suggests, then you can draw your own conclusions, of course. Um, needless to say, I'm ignoring all sorts of complexities as to how this would be done, how we would confirm that it's entangled and so, all sorts of things like that. But I'm very happy to talk more about it during the discussion time. So let me just leave you with the conclusions. As far as we are concerned, as far as we can tell, quantum physics really does seem to apply to objects at all scales. Again, I'm talking more 
as a as a microscopic atomic molecular quantum optician, if you like. Um, I don't know about astrophysics. It could be that there are some huge surprises there that will make us reconsider foundations of both quantum physics and general relativity. But from the micro side of things, the level that we are talking about, chemistry and biology, uh, we really don't see any surprises. We just have to keep going and maybe something happens. This is an interesting one. I like this because it makes no difference. It's a very democratic picture. All physical systems are the same. There is no difference between the observers and the observed. And even like I said, I commented on, on the fact that time itself could be seen to arise out of, a, of this sequence of quantum universes in this page Wouter's picture. Now, the final thing I want to say is that, um, is that we, we really do live in exciting times because many of these speculations that I talked about were there even in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, from various directions, people thinking about chemistry and biology, but also thinking about quantum gravity made all sorts of predictions of this kind. But we are now genuinely at the level where we can begin to test this experimentally. And I think it's a fantastic, you know, people say this century is the century of biology. The last one was the century of physics. I think they are completely wrong. This too is the century of physics and it's physics going into chemistry and biology and more macroscopic and explaining all of these things and seeing how it relates to that. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to be alive at a time like this. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Vatko, for the wonderful talk. We have two minutes for a short question. Um, there was Don Page who had his uh, hand raised since a while. So uh, uh, Professor Page, if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question. Yes. OK, well, very, very nice talk. I just want to make one thing that I think was a minor error. You said that, the, 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 that only the queuables exist, only these operators. But I would say that there's also the quantum state of the universe that gives expectation values for the operators. So I would Absolutely say right. Yeah, Ab absolutely right. And actually, you could see in my practice when I was calculating this for the uh, Max Zender interferometer, I had to take that average with right. this state of the universe that, that doesn't change. You're absolutely right. I agree. Yeah, yeah. And the other point is that maybe Alice, it might be simpler for Alice just to manipulate the part of Barnard Bob's brain where he believes in quantum mechanics. That might be easier than that. I mean, just like I remember the movie version of Contact that this woman came back from with with this long hiss on her on her recording device it was supposed to be some indication of time travel and it occurred to me it would be much simpler for these people just to manipulate the tape that she had i mean why they don't need any, any... I, I, yes i don i love the movie as well and i think you are absolutely right this goes in the direction of boltzmann brains you know what 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 is more likely to have happened or what is easier to create i think you're right, right. you're right yeah Okay, so this is a good time to uh, um, end the recording.